Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric and today I want to talk to you about voltage drop. What is voltage drop and why is it important? That's what I want to talk to you today on this episode of Access to Power. So voltage drop is extremely important because if you have too much voltage drop in a circuit, you can damage the equipment that you're trying to operate. If you have voltage drop in a motor circuit, you can actually burn up the motor. Or uh, a voltage drop in a branch circuit or in a feeder wiring can cause uh, extensive damage to the wiring. So you want to reduce voltage drop as much as possible. Now voltage drop is a function of how long a conductor is, the impedance of the wire or the resistance of the wire, the impedance of the circuit, uh, and um, how many volts you're trying to drive through that wire. And so you need to take all those things into consideration. Now, if you look up in the National Electric Code, there actually is not a code telling you how much voltage drop is acceptable. But there is a fine print note or in, they used to be called fine print notes, now they're called informational notes. And so in article 210.19, you have an, a note here that's saying, this is for conductors and branch circuits, that the, the wire should be sized to prevent more than 3% at the furthest outlet on that branch circuit, and no more than 5% for feeders and branch circuits. So a feeder is, say, your, uh, from your main panel to your distribution panel, and then the branch circuit would be that 20 amp circuit that feeds the, the receptacle in your office. So uh, no more than 5% on both the feeder and the branch circuit, and no more than 3% on the branch circuit it's, uh, itself. So now how do you use the National Electric Code in order to calculate voltage drop? Here is a formula for voltage drop. And in this formula, you have a E for voltage and the voltage drop uh, is equal. Now this is for a single phase circuit. We're gonna go over single phase and, and also three phase, but in a single phase circuit, you have the number two because you have, you have a hot going out, a neutral coming back, or line one going out, line two coming back. So you have two conductors. So you have a two uh, times K. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna explain to you what K is and where you get it. If you look for K in the National Electric Code, you're not gonna find it because it's a constant uh, value for the circular mills of a conductor over how many feet that conductor is, and you're not gonna find that in the code. But you can extrapolate K from the code. So. You have two on a single phase circuit times the constant for copper or aluminum, the two different values, times the distance, this is the one-way distance of the conductor uh, to that of that branch circuit, times the amperage of that branch circuit. So if you have a 20 amp branch circuit, maybe you have the maximum uh, continuous load on that circuit, which would be 16 amps. Um, you can plug that in if that was the maximum uh, amperage on that circuit. And then you divide that by the circular mills of the conductor. And that'll give you the voltage drop of your circuit. Now for three phase loads, everything is the same except for the two is changed to the square root of three, which is 1.732. Um, everything else is the same, the K value, the distance, the amperage of the circuit, the circular mills of the conductor, but you're gonna multiply by the square root of three, not two, because you have three conductors feeding that circuit on a three-phase circuit. So the K value for copper is 12.9 ohms. And this is based on ohms times the circular mills divided by a thousand feet. Uh, that is the K value, and that's also calculated at, seven, at, at the 75 degrees C column. Uh, that's the K value for copper. The K value for aluminum, and these are approximate values, they're gonna be really, really close, is 21.2 ohms. It's also the ohms per circular mills divided by 1,000 feet at 75 degrees C. Now, to, in order to calculate this using the, the NEC, 
you're going to have to go to chapter nine and table eight. And you're gonna look under the direct current resistance at 75 degrees. That's a column in, the, in your code book. And you're gonna use the uncoded column. Let me bring over um, table eight. So in order to calculate the K value of a copper conductor, you're gonna come here to table eight in chapter nine of the National Electric Code. And you're gonna find this column, direct current resistance at 75 degrees C. You're gonna look under copper. You're gonna look under uncoated copper. And then in the column of ohms per thousand feet. And here in my example, I have an example of K for number six stranded copper is, you take the, the ohms per thousand foot number, so that's 0.491, times the circular mills for number six stranded, which is 26,240. So these two numbers multiplied together, divided by a thousand feet, and that gives us 12.88, or very, very close, to our 12.9. We've rounded up to get our approximate K value. Uh, you could use those approximate values unless you're taking a test that is asking for exact values. But I wanted to show you how that value was found. You could do the same thing for aluminum. Aluminum, you will go to this column. And so number six, you would use the thousand ohms ohms per thousand feet I should say which is 2.04 uh, actually let's look let's look at number six again so the ohms per thousand feet in number six of aluminum is 0 0.808 again you would multiply that by 26,240 and then divide that by a thousand and that is going to give you something very close to 21.2 that's your k value for copper and aluminum so now all you really have to do is plug in some numbers. You have your, let's, let's get rid of our code book here. You have our, your um, K value. All you need now is your distance and your amperage and the circular mills of the, of the wire that you wanna use and you can figure out for voltage drop. All right, so I'm gonna bring over a spreadsheet just to make this a little easier. Let me see if I can resize this to make it a little bit more legible on the screen. There you go. And so here I have just taken this formula. This is for single phase. So I'm gonna bring it up here just under my single phase column. All right. So in these formulas, if, you'll, if I'll click here, you can see this formula. Uh, actually, let me highlight that. This equals, uh, it's hard to read. Right here I have single phase, which is the, the number two, the K value of copper, which is 12.9, the distance in feet, the one-way distance in feet of the circuit, the amperage of the circuit, I have uh, 20 amps here. And so I'm not gonna use number 12 because number 12 is only good for 16 amps of a continu continuous load. So I don't wanna use number 12. So let me bring over my code book here. I am going to use number 10. I have number 10 highlighted, and number 10 is 10,380 circular mils. So I've plugged that in. Now, this column right here, this value is equal to, to this column, or this cell, times this cell, times this cell, times this cell, multiply together, and then divided by the circular mills, exactly like our formula. So we're for a 300 foot number 10 conductor at 20 amps of load, copper wire on a single phase circuit, I have 14.91 volts of voltage drop. So that would give us, if we had a 4880 volt circuit, we would only have 465 volts showing up at at our at our motor or this is a this could be a single phase 40 volt motor we only have uh, 465 volts well that's a 3.11 percent voltage drop 
So according to our uglies, or not our uglies, according to the National Electric Code informational note, it said no more than a 3% drop on a branch circuit. This is our motor load. That's a branch circuit load. Uh, so we have too much voltage drop on this circuit. What if this was a three phase load? Let's take a look at that math. Here we have the same thing. Let me, let me make this larger as well. We have the same thing showing here. We have our voltage drop, our three phase. See, we got the square root of three, which is 1.732 times the K value of copper. Again, we have 300 feet, 20 amp load, number 10 wire, the KC mill for number 10 wire. And we have 12.91 volts in a voltage drop. So on a 480 volt circuit, we'll have 467, a slightly over 467 volts reaching the motor. That's 2.69% voltage drop. And that would be acceptable according to the National Electric Code informational note. Now, there are a couple other methods. Let me move my spreadsheet out of the way. There are a couple other methods. Actually, I prefer the second, the second method here, which because if you can't remember what the K value was and you can't remember to go to table eight and figure out the K value of, of, a, of your load, of, of your copper or your aluminum, if you forgot how to do that, you can't just look up, you can't do, even if you have an electronic code book, you can't, you can't do a search for the K value of copper. It's not in there. If you forgot how to do the math, you're not going to find it. So I prefer the second method of voltage drop, which uses, it's the exact same formulas. If you remember the sac exactly the same formula, two for single phase times Here's the difference. Instead of the K value, we use Z, which is the impedance of an, of an alternating current circuit. Uh, that's the impedance value. And the reason why I like using this value is because this is given to us for every single conductor in table nine of the National Electric Code. Let me see, let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna bring the National Electric Code back over. And this is table eight. Let's scroll down to table nine. And here under table nine, you'll see that ohms per thousand feet under effective impedance at 85% uh, power factor, which is, which is good. It's typical uh, for uncoated copper wire. And here you have number 14. And here also it will tell you the impedance in different kinds of conduit because metal conduit is going to affect the impedance of your circuit. Uh, so here you have in PVC conduit, so number 14 is uh, 2.7 ohms, or actually uh, ohms of impedance um, inside PVC. Inside of aluminum, it's the same. Inside of steel, it's the same. And for most of the small wires, they're gonna be the same for each pipe. You'll see a, a difference beginning here at number eight. You'll see it's 69, 0.69 for PVC, 0.69 for aluminum, 0 0.70 for steel conduit. It's gonna be slightly different. When you get into the larger conductor sizes, you'll see a bigger difference. 0.74 for PVC, um, 0 0.074 for PVC, 0 0.078 for aluminum, and 0 0.080 for steel. So I like using these because I can decide, I, I don't have to know my circular mills. I can come right over here and look at what kind of, what size wire I'm planning to run. I can go right and find the Z value for what size pipe I'm going to run it in or what kind of pipe I'm going to run it in. I know my distance. I know the amperage of my circuit. And then I'm going to divide that by a thousand feet and that'll give me my voltage drop. So let me bring my calculator back over here with my Excel spreadsheet. And you'll see that I ran the same calculations using, this was using the K method for three phase. Let's go to the Z method for single phase. So here, actually I'll bring this over here and I'll bring my code book back over next to it. 
like that. And we are, let's just use the same size conductor. So we're gonna use number 10. So my impedance, so say steel conduit, was 1.1. So this is a single phase circuit with a number 10 conductor at 1.1 at 300 feet. And you see my voltage drop is a little different than it was using the, uh, the other method because the other method wasn't taking into consideration the impedance of the conduit. In this method, I'm not only calculating the wire, I'm also calculating the impedance of the conduit that the wire is running through. So I like this, I think this is a much more accurate method. It's not a huge difference, but it's gonna give you a more accurate calculation. So here I have 13.2 uh, uh, volts of drop, uh, and I'm gonna have a 2.75% uh, voltage drop, which is acceptable. It's under three for a branch circuit that's going to be acceptable. Uh, and then the three phase method looks just like this. Let's go to the three phase method, except that I've replaced two with 1.732, the square root of three. And here again, I'll plug in the impedance for uh, number 10 in a steel conduit. And here I have a 2.38% voltage drop. So. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you, uh, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and uh, hit the bell notification to be notified of whenever we put out a new video. And until the next time, have a great day.